everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, at the moment I'm, I'm shooting with a different microphone, so if I'm sounding a bit different, that's why. I'm using this headset at the moment instead of my normal microphone, so I hope it sounds fine. Um, anyway, we are back here with the chassis. In the last video I showed you that I reassembled here the front plate uh, back together and it's surely looking really good. Um, and there are in the meantime, I did a bit of work also on the chassis. Uh, let me show you on the schematic. So yeah, here we have the schematic. Um, everything which is marked in green has been checked and is okay. So then we're talking about connections and values of resistors and capacitors. Um, the things that haven't been checked are mostly things inside the IF cans or things that aren't really critical, um, like here in the bands. Um, those things are working, so um, yeah, or they are really difficult to check, so I didn't bother. Um, so that seems fine. Then what has been replaced? Yeah, here we have, yeah, we already saw this in an earlier video, eh? we have here the filter capacitors. Um, which have been replaced and then we have um, some more capacitors like here you have this electrolytic uh, on the cathode of the EC92 and this uh, capacitor on the output of the audio and then also here the uh, electrolytic in the detector uh, has also been replaced um, and then I found that there were two resistors uh, slightly out of spec uh, like here the resistor on the anode, on the B plus of the EABC80. And same thing for the this one, I didn't mark it yet, but it's the same, it's uh, also a 470K resistor on the anode of the Magic Eye, the EM84. So both of these were slightly out of spec, not much, um, but I changed them anyway. So see that's this one over here on the uh, EM84 and over there we have the resistor replaced uh, on the plate of the EABC80. So here we have both resistors, let's see what they measure. Um, this is the one of the EABC80. See it should measure 470k, we're measuring 535, um, which is not really a lot out of spec and it will definitely work still fine but uh, yeah this does give a slight indication that this resistor had a bit of a hard life so it won't um, improve anymore eh? so this will get worse and worse so I just decided to swap it out uh, anyway and this is the one of the EM84 of the Magic Eye see that one is worse even um, 600k, 610k almost, should be 470. So that one is uh, quite a bit out of spec. Also not dramatic, will also still work. But since they are so far out of spec, I um, yeah, it does give an indication that they have a hard life. Eh? So I swapped them anyway with um, 470k metal oxide 5% uh, uh, resistors. So those should be way better, um, see. Okay, so I wanted to talk a bit about the alignment. Uh, maybe quickly go over the alignment and see what we will do and see what we will skip. Um, because I'm not going to do everything. Um, so they start here with the AM part. So this is alignment, aligning the tuner. And they start with the AM and the first step is the 900 Hz whistle filter. Um, so what is a whistle filter? Well, um, this is basically a notch filter which cuts out um, the 900 Hertz or the 9 kilohertz frequency from the audio tone. Now why what is this and why does this tuner have um, cuts out the 900 Hertz or 9 kilohertz from the audio? Um, that's because here in Europe the AM stations they are 9 kilohertz apart um, Depending where you are in the world, this will change. I think in the US it's 10 kilohertz, but here in Europe it's 9. Um, so that if you have like, um, if you're listening to a station and you have a very strong station next to you, so let's say 9 kilohertz higher or lower, then um, it might be possible that you can hear this carrier frequency difference between 
your station and, and the, the station next door, let's say, and you, you hear this as a 9 kilohertz tone in the audio, which obviously is quite annoying. Um, so that's why this radio has a uh, notch filter. A notch filter is basically the opposite of a bandpass filter, eh? so it uh, cuts out uh, one particular frequency, so it has to be very deep and very narrow because you don't want to, yeah, you want to remove the 900 hertz, uh, 9000 hertz, but you don't want to, you want to limit it as much as possible to 9000 hertz, so you don't want to cut more of the audio as you really need to. Um, so that's this whistle filter, but the problem obviously with this is that if um, um, if it is mistuned, then you it will completely lose its effect because it will cut off a sequence if, uh, a frequency at the side. For example, let's say 905 kilohertz if it is mistuned, and, and your annoying um, nine kilohertz whistle will still come true. So it's critical that this whistle filter is um, tuned correctly. I don't know if I explained this well, but I, I hope you understand. So, um, if you are listening to a station which has a very strong station next door, then you might have a annoying 9 kilohertz tone in the audio and you want to cut out this tone. Let me first show you on the scope that it is actually working at the moment. Uh, so, I have here my signal generator and I have my scope. Uh, the signal generator is connected to the uh, grid of the last IF stage, of the EF89. Um, so that's this point over here. You can see the EF89 is over here. And the uh, 9 kilohertz whistle filter is over here. It's this guy over here. So this is the capacitor that you need to tune to tune the whistle filter. Um, now I have my uh, signal generator uh, here on the grid of the EF89. And, uh, and I have the scope simply connected, connected to the output of the tuner uh, right over there. So if I now enable the uh, signal generator, yeah, you see I have a tone clearly on the output. I have now an 800 hertz tone. It's 1 to 1 volt peak to peak, which is maybe a bit hot. Let me just decrease the uh, or increase the attenuation a bit. Oh yeah, okay. 950 millivolts um, peak to peak. So now if I'm gonna increase the frequency here, so this is 800 hertz. Let me just increase the frequency. We are now at 1.1 kilohertz. Let's go to 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz. Four ki you see that, yeah, this is normal that the amplitude of the signal is dropping. Let me go to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So yeah, it's already quite low. And then we let's go to 9 kilohertz. And you see that, that the frequency is really dropping quite low. Let's go to 10. And it's again a bit higher. So this is 9, this is 8, this is 9, and this is 10. So you see that the tuner is cutting the frequency at 9 kilohertz more or less a bit. So let's just zoom here a bit on 9 kilohertz. Not gonna be a great signal, but hey. Um, then let's go a bit deeper. So here we are at 8. Okay. Just auto adjust. So this is 8 kilohertz. So I'm now gonna go in steps of dot 1 kilohertz. So this is 801, 802, 803, 804, 805, 6, 7, 808, 809, 9 kilohertz, 9.1, it's still dropping. 9.2, it's again bigger. See? So this is around 9 kilohertz. 9.2. 3, 9.4. See, so we have here a, uh, yeah, the, the notch filter is clearly working, but it's maybe slightly misaligned. So let's try to follow exactly what they say here. So first step is uh, select medium wave. Then the next step 
is remove B5, and B5 is the EABC80. Then the next step is to short S31. S31 is that coil over there, that guy over there, that one. So I'm just gonna take this jumper here and see what is the easiest place to short. S31 is on one side connected to ground, so I can just here take this ground connection. And then the other side is this resistor over here. Oh, no, this one over there, sorry. This one. And the next step is then to connect a voltmeter between 0.6 of uh, the socket of B5 and ground. And then we're going to apply a signal of 9 kilohertz through a uh, 0 0.22 mega ohm resistor in series with a 0 0.22 microfarad capacitor to the sec cross section of R24 and six, uh, C61. So the here is C61 and this is R24. So this is the place where we're gonna apply the uh, 9 kilohertz tone. So what I basically want us to do is to remove the detector and then we're just gonna apply an audio tone over here. And this is the whistle filter that we're gonna tune. So let's find R24 and C61 over here. So here we have R24 and there is C61. So let's go down. Um, focus, thank you. There we have C61 and that's R24. So it seems that they are both connected here to this can pin one yeah see so that is um that pin over there um this is uh c61 and that that one the back one that's r24 and they are both connected here see to that pin so we're going to supply the 9 kilohertz tone to there. Let me just snap on the signal generator there, if I can. That should do it, I guess. Uh, see, then they say, um, so adjust C73, which is the whistle filter, to a minimum on the voltmeter and then restore the tuner back in its original condition. The capacitor that we need to adjust is on the top. So it's that guy over there, C73. And it's that guy over there that we need to adjust. Okay, so I decided to use the scope instead of the voltmeter because my digital uh, multimeter cannot uh, measure these types of high uh, frequencies as AC voltage. So, um, yeah, this is 10 kilohertz, um, this is 9 kilohertz, and this is 8 kilohertz. So here you clearly see the difference, right? Yeah, so I only just managed to get it in shots, but uh, it's this guy over here. And um, I just removed the wax, and you can adjust this by hand, I think. Yeah, see? So now the thing is obviously how to get this as accurate as possible. Wow, the signal is very weak. Um, yeah, see, I can reduce it, eh? see? See, now I am going to 8.9 kilohertz, this is 9 kilohertz, and this is 9.1. So there you see that now it's really centered that. Yeah, it, it can be a bit better even. Let's center it a bit better. Yeah, this is perfect. All right, so there we have it. 
this is now a 50 millisecond sweep from uh, 8 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz and here in the middle uh, we have 9 kilohertz and then you can see that it is um, just slightly off center but you can nicely see the dip here the uh, notch filter let's see what happens if we twist the capacitor So I'm not doing anything yet. There we go. Okay, I'm not seeing a lot. Yeah, see? See? It's shifting towards the right. Yeah, this is perfect now. Now it's nicely centered on 9 kilohertz. No, this is maybe the best way to align uh, like it like this because then you can clearly see where the center of the notch filter is. Now you can also see that it's not a really fantastic notch filter because um, yeah, here afterwards it goes up quite steeply but before there is not really a sharp cutoff. So for a notch filter you really want to have the cutoff as sharp as possible which is not the case here but hey. Um, it's already a feature that uh, other radios from this time period didn't always have. So, yeah, you can clearly see that this is... Uh... So, yeah, I guess it's also because it's quite an uh, expensive model or it was a high-end model in the uh, end of the 50s. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so we have the whistle filter nicely aligned um, up to the next part of the AM alignment. Okay, so I would like to talk a bit about this button over here. Um, that's the... I've been calling it the band spread button, but it's actually a band width button. Um, now, I'm recording this after the alignment, so I already did the AM alignment. But um, I realized that maybe it's more interesting if I explain this first. Um, so this button... Um, at first I thought it was a band spread button. Um, to able to extend the band here on the on the, the AM, especially on shortwave. And I didn't really look into what it was doing. But then when I um, actually looked at it, I realized it's not a band spread button because yeah, here in Dutch it says bandbreite, which is Dutch for bandwidth. So what it does, it widens the bandwidth on, uh, on AM, only on AM, um, but for the audio, so not for the carrier, but it widens the, the bandwidth for audio. So here in Europe, um, AM radio stations are traditionally 9 kilohertz apart. So this basically means that every uh, AM station has a bandwidth of 9 kilohertz. 4.5 kilohertz to the left of the carrier, and 4.5 kilohertz to the right of the carrier. Because at that point, obviously, the, the bandwidth of the next station starts because that one also has 4.5 to the left, 4.5 to the right. So you have two carriers in between, you have 9 kilohertz, of which 4.5 is for the left station or the lower station, and 4.5 is for the upper station. So in total, every station has a bandwidth of... of um, 4.5, uh, sorry, 9 kilohertz. Now, um, I'm not going to go into details on how the sidebands are created with uh, the AM modulation, etc. Um, but as AM modulation is symmetrical, so this means that um, whatever modulation you're doing creates a sideband on both sides of the carrier. So uh, everything you do in the 4.5 kilohertz to the right of the carrier will be symmetrical to the left. This means that you have an effective audio bandwidth of only 4.5 kilohertz, right? Because, yeah, it's the same on both sides of the carrier. Now, this is how it works in practice, and it's just a matter of convention that these stations are 9 kilohertz apart. In theory, you could have an unlimited bandwidth. I mean, um, AM doesn't have any real, yeah, okay, theoretical upper limit on the audio bandwidth that you can 
encode. So this means that a station could have a much wider bandwidth than the 4.5. So if you would have a station which doesn't have any strong stations besides it, next to it, then it might make sense to widen the bandwidth, right? Because then you can pick up the higher frequencies which you normally could not pick up. A normal radio doesn't do this. Um, a normal radio cuts off the audio at around uh, 4.5 kilohertz, or maybe even lower on AM, just so that it doesn't pick, any, pick up any of the interference of the, the station next to it, right? But in certain scenarios, it might make sense to do this. If you don't have any interference of any neighboring stations, then you might, yeah, it might make sense to only for that station that you're listening to, to widen this, this bandwidth. And that's basically what this button does. So if you press the band width button, then you are widening the audio bandwidth that the AM um, is picking up here, even though you are technically or, or theoretically you're going outside of the specification limits of what is in the official bandwidth of the station. Um, if you push this button, you'll widen the bandwidth. And see, that's also what we have here on the specs sheets in the service manual. So the bandwidth of the AM is normally it's 8 kilohertz. So you see um, there is 9 kilohertz in between the stations, but the radio is tuned for 8 kilohertz. And then when you push the white button, it's enlarged to 15 kilohertz. So that means that you have an effective audio frequency up until 7.5 kilohertz here, whereas on the small, you only have an effective audio frequency of uh, 4 kilohertz. Maybe it's a good idea to show you a bit in practice how this works. So yeah, I would like to show this on the scope. So ideally, I would like to show a... Um, I would like to do a sweep on an audio frequency and show you how much of the audio uh, frequencies are coming through, basically. Um, so starting from 0 hertz to maybe 10 kilohertz, let's say. At 10 kilohertz, then we are uh, anyway outside the range. So if I would do a sweep from 0 to 10 kilohertz, and then it would be really nice to show the bandwidth that is coming through with and without the bandwidth switch pressed in. And then you can nicely see the effect of uh, on the audio. Um, now the problem is with this, that obviously I need to sweep the audio frequency. Um, so that means that um, I want to send in a carrier, and that carrier needs to say fixed, and then I need to sweep the modulation. Um, I, I want to change the modulation from 0 hertz to, or let's say from uh, 20 hertz or something, or 100 hertz to uh, 10 kilohertz. Now, how am I going to do this? Because my um, frequency generator, uh, my signal generator, I don't think it supports this. I, at least I don't know how to do it. I don't think it's supported. You can do a sweep, but you can only sweep the carrier, not the modulation. So I'm going to use two uh, signal generators at the same time. So the nice thing about this guy is that it has an internal uh, modulator, so it can modulate a 400 hertz signal, but you can also supply an external tone and use that as uh, an audio input, and then it does the modulation of this tone and it sends it out on a carrier frequency. So the idea is that I use this uh, signal generator to um, to sweep the audio, so setting up a sweep like uh, uh, like I said, from 10 to 100, uh, from sorry, 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz, putting it in on this signal generator and having this guy modulate it on top of a carrier and send that to the antenna of the radio. That's the idea. Now I have everything set up, so I have um, the output here of the signal generator is going into the uh, input the audio input of this signal generator and the output of this signal generator is going to the antenna of the input of the radio um, and the trigger here um, the sync signal of the sweep is going to the scope and I'm using that as a trigger 
okay? I hope you can still follow. Um, so I'm just blasting it in at the maximum peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage that I can at the moment. Um, and I have here, see, I am doing a sweep. Um, I have a sweep, let me see if I can adjust the brightness here a bit, because it's a bit difficult to read, okay? Um, see, I'm doing a sweep of 100 milliseconds, and I am sweeping from 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz, right? Maybe to make it a bit easier, let's start at 10 hertz. And as soon as you enable the sweep, you can already see that the sync here is coming in on the scope. So I have the sync on channel 2. Um, and that one is coming in nicely, as you say. And then, obviously, I have the output of the tuner. I have that uh, connected to channel 1 of the scope. Um, okay, and then I also have here this signal generator. I have it set for... Uh, 550 um, kilohertz and then I have here the radio or the tuner set to medium wave and or not yet yeah, yeah the tuner is off now but it's set to 550 kilohertz on medium wave um, all right now let's see let's first of all power up the tuner here And let's wait until the tubes warm up. And um, for the moment, I'm just going to use, just as a, for a second, the internal modulation. Oh, you can already hear it, see? I'm just going to use the 400 Hz tone internal modulation, just to put the radio on the, on the correct station, right? Maybe I'm just going to turn up the volume a bit and see here to tune it correctly. Okay, it's tuned rather nicely, I guess. Let's disable the modulation. So now I'm again on the external um, modulation. And now I'm just going to enable my audio sweep here and see what we get. There we have it. Yeah, okay, I do notice that I'm not really perfectly tuned here to the station. So let me just tune here the the tuner a bit better this is the maximum I think okay now let's turn down the volume um, what do we see here well um, we have here the sweep from let's say 10 Hertz to 10 kilohertz and you see that the amplitude of the audio is dropping off quite drastically here um, so halfway let's say 5 kilohertz we almost have nothing left anymore see 0 10k so and it's a linear sweep so we have 5k in the middle here more or less now what happens if I put uh, push the bandwidth switch let me just do that now okay I'm also a bit mistuned here I think yeah, it does impact your tuning slightly. See, that is the with the band switch. Bandwidth switch. Man, this is really a tongue twister. <laughs> with the bandwidth switch pushed in. <laughs> Jesus. And you can see that really the bandwidth coming through is much, much wider here. And here you can see our 9 kilohertz. Uh, whistle filter over here nicely right now um, let me just disable it again okay now um, let's check if my calculations or my predictions are more or less correct I have let me just enable the cursors here um, First, we're going to see what do we have at, um, let's say, like I said, 4.5 kilohertz. Um, see, so I'm just putting one cursor here at the beginning of the sweep. And now the other one we have here. Um, 
a delta x in milliseconds. So this is basically the difference in milliseconds between the two cursors. Uh, since we know that the sweep is 100 milliseconds wide, see, uh, and we are now at 6.6 .6 from the start, um, and we also know that it's 10 kilohertz, the frequency, uh, we can deduce that this is um, 60 hertz, something like this, 66 hertz. Let me just move it a bit, or 660 hertz was co more correct, I think. See, here we have, um, see, at 45 milliseconds. Here we should be at uh, 4.5 kilohertz, right? In the middle is 5, here is 4.5 kilohertz. Now let's just remember what um, audio level we have over here. So just, I'm just going to put a cross section over there. That's the audio level that we have here at 4.5 kilohertz. Okay, now let us enable the band width switch and I just need to do again a bit of tuning now. Make sure that my magic guy is maxed out. Jesus, what is happening here? This is with the, mag the magic eye maxed. Voila, okay. Um, and let's see where we get so let's take the other cursor, this one, no, that one, um, let's go up, let's go up, let's go up. See, we have here our whistle filter at 9 kilohertz, right? Now, it says 9.1 because, yeah, probably, where did I put my first cursor? It's not going to be 100% correct, but you can clearly see that this is the 9 kilohertz whistle filter that we aligned first. Um, where do we have here a cross-section uh, with the uh, audio level that we expect? And, yeah, indeed, we are at around 8 kilohertz. So we are basically... For the same amount of audio level, we are um, increasing the audio level from 4.5 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz um, when we press the bandwidth switch. And you see that now the high frequencies here, they are also coming through. Um, but if we, yeah, a normal radio doesn't do this. A normal radio would behave um, like this. Uh, let me just see. Uh, this is... Ah, this is here. This is how a normal radio would behave, right? Um, and then you don't have any issue with the interference of the 9 kilohertz carrier of the neighboring station. But when we push here the bandwidth switch, see, then you so much increase the audio bandwidth that is coming through on AM that you get in the range here of the carrier of the neighboring station and that's why we need this notch over here that we just aligned earlier in the video. Okay, um, that's really cool to see and that's also one of the reasons why this is considered like a high fidelity or a high-end tuner that you can do this. And a normal radio doesn't do this, it just cuts off at yeah 4 kilohertz, 4.5 and then everything below um, is basically attenuated so strong that you don't have any interference of the neighboring stations. But the trade-off is obviously that you don't never have any high tones on AM. With this guy, you can receive high tones on AM. Let's see, see, I think here at 10 kilohertz, it's even, yeah, you can even hear it, right? Um, so, yeah. If there would be a radio station which is sending out high frequencies and you don't have any neighboring stations to interfere, then this tuner will pick them up. Just for curiosity, let's maybe do increase the sweep to 20 kilohertz. Let's see what we get. Um, normally, I don't think we should have a lot um, because remember that the band uh, that they said that the bandwidth was extended to seven and a half or eight. So yeah. I don't think we will have a lot above this, but okay, let's try it anyway. Um, I'm just gonna now put the stop frequency here at 20 
kilohertz. And let's see what we get. See, we have here now our 9 kilohertz notch. Then we have still quite a bit of frequency above the 9 kilohertz. And then it's dropping off drastically. And we basically don't have anything above 10. But that's still twice the amount of audio bandwidth that the normal uh, AM receiver would receive. So, yeah, this is, I think, quite interesting and quite nice to visually show you how um, what the hi-fi capabilities are of this uh, receiver. And this is something that from yeah that period of time, let's say the 1950s, um, a feature like this, it was already existing also on earlier radios, but only on the very uh, expensive models. So, okay, that's that. Um, I just wanted to add this video before uh, starting the everything about the AM alignment, because I think it, it makes sense to put it after the alignment of the whistle filter. Um, and then, yeah, also before the uh, alignment of the AM. So, okay. Now back to the AM alignment. Okay, so um, I think that's enough for this video. Um, it's already running quite long. Um, I didn't expect it to take this long. I originally planned to do the entire AM alignment in one video, but hey, this was interesting as well, I think. Um, so um, we're going to do then the AM alignment, the actual alignments of the IF and the RF in the next video. And then I also still need to check the FM. I'm not yet sure if I'm actually going to align anything on the FM, but we will have to check the detector anyway, because I replaced the detector capacitor and I also replaced the EIBC-80. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, what's, what's coming up? And that's basically it, because then the only thing left is putting everything back together, which is not a lot of work with the tuner like this. So. Anyway, I uh, hope to see you in the next video. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And then I'll see you in the next one. So take care. Bye bye.